Hagar chapter 1 verse 6. Ye have so much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Brakatayahawa, brakatayahawa shai. Brakatayahawa, brakatayahawa shai. Brakatayahawa, brakatayahawa shai. Call halal la yahawa ba shimmy hawa shai, which is Hebrew for interpret. Bless Yahweh, bless Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching His word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I don't have a title for this video, but um, I was meditating on this scripture uh, because, you know, I had brought it out for someone. To uh, get understanding, you know, and why, you know, we're, we're slaves, man, and why we're subject to the system, all right? And um, why we need Yahweh Shai to redeem us and to get us out of bondage. Because, you know, in the conversation earlier, it was, you know, you work, you're going to be working for the rest of your life, all right? And you're not even getting the full um benefit or let's say profit from your work okay you know you work you get a check you get a direct deposit you know when you look at the pay stud you know you're going to see taxes being t uh being taken out of your uh your check you know you might get government taxes you might get a uh union rep tax and you're not even really officially part of the union you know, they're not going to go to bat for you, you know, if you kind of slipping up at the job and getting into a little trouble because you probably late or probably didn't show, you know, and you're not really a part of your union, you know, but they still take union dudes, union, union dudes. All right. Um, another thing, too, is uh, garnish wedges. You know, you might have messed up with your credit on a credit card. And the credit card is basically suing you and, you know, they goes to, you know, tax collections and they they get around to uh, garnishing your wages, you know, until you pay back the money that you owe them. All right. With your credit, you know. So, you know, life in this this world today under Esau is hell. All right. Hell is a condition. OK. Hell is a condition. And we're truly living in hell, man. So this is Hagar chapter 1 and 6 again. Ye have so much and bring in little. That's right. Because you may work a lot. You may put in all this work. You know, Esau wants you to give your life over to his job. He wants you to give your life over to his company. You know, he wants you to, you know, give your life over to receive pennies and, and uh, crumbs. You know, nothing wealth. It's just check by check, day by day. You know, most Jakes, you know, live check by check. All right. And there's other ways to make money. But unfortunately, the way Jake is taught in school, going through the system, you know, you will have to really venture out. You will have to go into accounting and, you know, things that deal with money, you know, as far as your career, if you go to college. And things of that nature but in high school elementary school they're not teaching these kids on how to uh, have wealth because Esau don't want you to have wealth and besides the Lord put you here to be a slave all right until he redeem you so right now we're supposed to be crying out you're supposed to be in a sorrow uh, mindset man you know because because of the condition you know of course you know the Lord promised us a kingdom he promised us heaven on earth man we would never beg again. We would never cry. All right. We would have resources. We have everything a heart could wish for, man. You know, we have slaves. All right. We'd be princes, man. Living, living in this world, you know, in a way the Lord enjoy, want us to enjoy this world in which he made. This world is big, man. And the Most High put us here to enjoy it. But obviously we can't enjoy it because of because Israel's wickedness. The Most High is paying us back. 
and ultimately because Esau is ruling. What's that? Psalms, um, well, Proverbs 29 and 2. Um, when the wicked rejoice, the people mourn. When the righteous bear rule, the people rejoice. So anyway, it says, ye have so much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. All right. So no matter how much hard you work, it's still not enough. It's still not enough because you got to do it again. You got to do it again. It says, ye drink, but ye have not filled with drink. Meaning you're never satisfied. All right. It says, ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. And that's exactly how this system is ran. This pit, you know, you're part of the system regardless because you were born here. Now, it's your choice if you worship it, you know, but you don't have to worship it. You can call upon the name of the Lord, man. And may the Lord guide your steps in righteousness, man, you know. But it's a lot about, it's a thing of being patient, learning to suffer, you know, and being content, which I'm going to get in the next uh, precept. So it says, but there is none warm and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. So literally, you know, your money and which you earn and you work for, it goes right. As soon as you get it, it goes right to what? bills it goes the right it goes to everything in which you need it so say here for an example you um by the end of the month last two weeks you're struggling you know you barely got the food in which you you eat you know you barely got the gas money you barely got certain things you might have to borrow or or the case may be but guess what as soon as you get that check again What's the first thing you're going to do? You got to pay your bills. You got to re-up with the things you need, the things you eat, the things you desire for food, you know, and don't, don't, don't let you get a ticket, you know, don't let you get into a jam, your car break down. Now you might have to dish out for a car part, 200 something dollars. So that's just, you know, that's just digging into your pockets, man. As the scriptures say. It says, and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes, man. So literally, you're working, and when you receive profit, your profit goes into a bag that has a hole at the bottom. Because it's really, you don't have any money. You did all that work. You got some guys in the world, they work three jobs, two jobs, and then they get a toy. They might get them a car. You know, which is stupid, something 2020, you know, an updated, you know, updated year car, get into a lease. And that's stupid because now you put yourself in slavery to your car. You know, that's just dumb. You know, Jake do some wild shit, man. You know, and like I said, man, you know, in the school system, you're not taught on how to finance your money. You know, so it's, it's, it's best that if you had parents. Or you learn the way through school, you know, accounting. And I'm saying accounting because I know that's dealing with that avenue. But, you know, until you be able to manage yourself, then you're going to be mis misunfortunate, man. You know, you're going to be a part of the cycle, which is the buy, 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 you know, and never really receive, never really earn any type of wealth. But in our reality, you can't because through your how bash me, I was shy. You were set here to cry and mourn. This is punishment, man. All right? So anyway, I don't want to go on too long. Um, let's get this next scripture. 1 Timothy 6 and 5. All right, so. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I start here at 5. It says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself you see so a lot of two the two-thirds of our people you know they believe that gain is godliness a man that in quiet he, he he accumulates a lot of money he can spend he looks good 
because he has the money, he has this, he has that. They believe that gain is godliness. This is clearly the churches, the 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 government churches, the Black Baptist, Pentecost, Jehovah's Witness, Christianity. You know all your famous uh, pastors that be on, you know, TV that be selling out the garden, selling out stadiums. You know, the people believe two thirds of our people. All right, they suppose that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. All right, and these men, they have what? Corrupt minds. All right, so if you living in that type of mentality, or you're thinking in that mentality, then you have a corrupt mind. All right, Satan is on your side. This is verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Exactly. Okay. But godliness, serving your how about me, I was shy, ordering your ordering your conversation upright. All right. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, I want to go into the word contentment, which is I believe is a Greek word. And yeah, it is. Strong's G eight forty one. Austarkaya. Austarkaya. And contentment, a perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed. All right. Sufficiency of the necessities of life, a mind contended with its lot. Contentment. That's beautiful. That's a it says a mind contended with its lot. You know, contentment, meaning, you know, you're content about your lot. And this is why brothers, you know, even myself, you know, we, we young men and we're growing in the truth. We're growing. All right. One thing that we all have to do is learn to learn to love our lot. You know, we all have a lot. You know, we're all a piece of the body. Those of the whole for elect, you know, those that have faith and teach the word in sincerity. All right. We all have a lot. So we have to be content. We have to have a mind content in our lot, having contentment, you know, like knowing our position, knowing what it is that the Lord acquire of us, you know, learning your talent, you know, exercising your talent. You know, you know, the, the uh, brothers know the, the parable of the of the uh, talents, you know, you got to multiply the talents, do the work of the Lord, you know, and your talent all itself will multiply, man. You know, put the Lord first. It says a perfect condition of life. You know, meaning a brother, like Solomon said. Solomon said, um, I'd rather not be rich, at least I forsake the Lord. And if I be poor, at least I still. So Solomon was basically saying he'd rather be content in the middle, balanced out. And isn't our Lord require us to be balanced? Because he's a balance. He says he's a just weight. All right. He's a just weight, a balance scale. That's why the Most High created uh, uh, the wickedness. He created righteousness. He even created us in the flesh to have a balance on the earth. We got two feet. We got two legs. We got two arms. We got two eyes. We got two ears. All right? So the Most High is all about balance. And that's the way we have to be, man. Even though it's tough, it's rough, it kind of gets you frustrated. You get mad and shit. You know, you get your moments, man. But it's most important to pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. To be what? Content with your lot. So it says a perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed. Okay. Um, Self satisfaction. Contentedness. All right. That's the point. That's the point. So let's get back. Um,. Verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And that's so true. All right? Because when you were born, when you was being created, it didn't cost not a lick, not not a not an ounce of, of, of money, man. Okay? It didn't cost a penny, all right, for you to be born. Because you were what? Born of your father. Your father's uh, 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 seed, okay, from his loins, and you were carried into what? A woman's womb, 
okay? And when you got in that woman's womb, she was an incubator. And then after nine months, you were born. That didn't cost a penny. That didn't cost a dime. All right? It says, for we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. You know, it says, you know, and, and why is that important? Because um, I believe that was Psalm 73. Uh, let me get that real quick. Let's see. I believe it's Psalm 73. <clears throat> Psalms 73 and 1. It says, Truly the Most High is good to Israel, even to the such as are of a clean heart, which is a mind, which is a clean mind. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. All right, so that's the point, because if you're not content with your lot, you know, this Satan is going to make you envious with the wicked. All right, you're going to be jealous over the foolish because you see the wicked receiving prize, getting reward. All right, you see them uh, out there living in this type of lifestyle of fun, freedom. Wow, you know, uh, uh, you know, doing whatever it is they want. But you, you being restricted, you know, you can't do those things. You got to sacrifice, you know, you got to, you know, be in a box, you know, basically. You got to take yourself out of the world. So at times, Satan will fuck with you to piss you off. And that's what the brother, uh, the, the brother here, ASAP, all right, he's explaining. So I'll read again, verse two. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there is no bands in their death, but in their strength is firm. And we all know this goes into the nature of Esau, all right, because they truly have no band in their death, all right, and their strength is firm, okay? And it says, verse 5, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men, all right? And that's talking about Esau, man. All right, so let me get back to uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6 and verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. All right. And one thing, too, Yahweh Shai may mention he said it's hardly for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. All right. Not saying that no rich man won't, you know, make it, but it's hardly all right for a rich man to make it because he has a he has everything a heart could wish for. What need of him with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? You know? What faith is he truly gonna have? It says, but they that will be rich fall in, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. And there's so much uh, carnal lust things out there, you know, and if you got money to get it, you know, that's scary, you know, because you can feed your flesh whatever your heart's desire. That's pretty scary, man. It says foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition, because if they don't have the money, they go crazy, man. You know, you start to lose when you have money and you lose. You, you lose your money, you know, that's the worst thing. It will it will probably be better if you never had the money. Because now what? The toys go away. You know, the, the women go away. Your source of power, your word goes away. You know, it says, verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some converted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Alright. So the root of money. The root of. It says. The, for the love of money. Is the root of all evil. 
See, for your love of of money, it is the root of evil. Because remember, you wasn't you wasn't born because you had money. Okay, money didn't you know create you. So if your mind is 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 set in stone and rooted that you gotta have money before anything, like these niggas in the world, how they preach and they teach in their rap songs, you know what they say, little slogans, um um I forgot the fucking slogans, you know, that they say all the time, money first, bitches come after and all that other shit. Cause their mind is is uh they feel like without the money they could be nothing. You know, so the scripture says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, so much evil comes behind the, the silver coin or, or the gold coin. And in this day, the Federal Reserve note. All right. It says, which while some converted after, they have erred from the, from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of Yahweh, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Alright, so these are the quality of things that we need to acquire ourselves to not fall into those temptations, man. It says flee these things. So when you get tempted with, with that love of money on your mind, being rooted, then what? You need to re rebuke that spirit, man. All it is is a spirit, a lustful spirit. It says, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. It says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. And eternal life is the word. Eternal life is the kingdom that we're going to receive by enduring in this word of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai, all the way to the end. You know, and that takes faith. Key word there is faith. I'm going to say it again. Faith. If you ain't got faith, you ain't got nothing. All right? You got guys out here in these different camps which is with 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 seducing spirits, you know, doctrines of devils speaking lies, man. You know? Trying to take away the faith that you believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai so that you can fall short. All right? But so it says fight. Another key word there in verse 12. Fight. Fight the good fight. Of faith Maybe I'll um, Title the video after that It says lay hold on eternal life Whereunto thou art also called And has professed A good profession Before many witnesses Alright It says I give thee charge In the sight of Yahweh Who quickeneth all things And before Hamashiach Yahweh Shai Who before Pontius Pilate Witnessed a good confession it says that thou keep this commandment without spot, unre unrebukable, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord, Yahawashai Hamashiach. All right. So if we do these things and keep the faith and the standard in which the Lord uh, uh, gave to us, then what? We should be what? Without spot, unrebukable. All the way to the appearing of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Because we the scriptures tell you that uh we all shall come to the seat of Yahweh Shai. And we shall be judged for the things that we done, whether good or bad. You see? So, uh one more scripture and I'm gonna wrap it up. This is uh James two and five money topic. Alright, so let's get that. James chapter two. Verse 5 um, Hearken my beloved brethren Have not the most high Chosen the poor of this world Rich in faith And heirs of the kingdom Which he have promised to them that love him But ye have despised the poor Do not rich men oppress you And draw you before the judgment seat And it's a spirit When it comes to that money thing man You know we just read it you know the, the the love of money is the root of all evil because it's so much evilness spirits evil spirits you know when a man gets money first thing he develop is pride you know he start talking to you a certain way he start you know uh uh, uh treating you different you know it's pride man 
It's a lot of evil spirits when it comes to that. You know, so even though, you know, we don't have much, all right, and even though we're not seeking to have more than enough, you know, we got to be in the middle, you know, and we got to cry out to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So it says, hearken, my beloved brethren, have not Yahweh chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? Which he have promised to them that love him. So the most I have chosen the poor. To be what? Rich in faith. That's what we're very rich in. We got we got more riches in faith. Than these niggas today. That got carnal riches man. They can't hold on forever to their riches. But we can hold on forever to ours. Until that great day. Alright. And then. You know carnally we're going to have it all too. Because the, I'm going to say this, the, the 144,000 men, you know, they're the government body of Yahweh Shai. They're going to be the elite of the world to come when Yahweh Shai return, man. You know, it's, it's a role of changing powers, man. Um, this is verse 6. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat. See, here it is. You got Jake out here with no, with nothing, man. In the slums. But you would despise the men of the Lord. Because you would say, yo, they bones, they poor, they out there with robes on. And, and y'all look a fool. Y'all sound foolish. You would despise us. But don't rich men oppress you? Here it is. You, you loving on these, uh, you idol worshiping these celebrities. But do not rich men oppress you? And draw you before the judgment seats? Do ye do they not blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? And all these celebrities sold out. All right, I don't care if they calling upon. They believe they're an Israelite. That's just one thing. You got to start doing the. Uh, uh, you got to do the will of the Most High, man. You got to carry yourself as an Israelite. You got to live in the in the ways of an Israelite, man. All right, and do the things that the Lord require for you to do. To show forth repentance to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Not just knowing because them guys are sold out, man. You know, them guys are making mockery of the Most High, man. They're making mockery of you. You were called Yasha Allah, Prince of the Power. Okay. You were called the children of uh, the children of Israel, man. The Israelites. Let me say the ch the Israelites. All right. Yasha Allah. And they make mockery of that name. You are the. the the true Jews that the Bible speaks of. All right. Uh, verse eight. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. You know, so that's basically the point. Um, this lesson was motivated earlier from um, from from a, a conversation. And um, it was really based upon, you know, how much, you know, you don't have nothing. You know, you really you work, work, work. But then. You know, like have uh, what is that? Hey, guy. You know, one in six. You know, it's like you have a bag full, a bag at the bottom. It's it's a hole. So you put your money in a bag filled with holes, man. You know, you don't have nothing, man. But what we do have is your how about Shem Shai, and you best believe the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. All right. Um, matter of fact, let me get one scripture and I end it with that. Uh, let's go to Luke. Uh. Let's go to, you know, just to build the spirit. All right, I can't go back. Okay, Luke, Luke 18 and 1. It says, and he spake the parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So the key thing is to always to pray. Stay in prayer with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, saying, there was in, there was in a city a judge. Which feared not the Most High, neither regarded man. All right, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, "Avenge me of my adversary." And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, "Though I fear not the Most High, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, least by her continuing coming." shall she weary me all right so this man was an unjust judge that Yahweh Shai is speaking about all right far as an example 
And he didn't fear the Most High. He was wicked. But this woman, this widow, troubled him every time she got the chance, you know, to plead her cause, you know, to, to ask him for help for who was troubling her. And, and, the, and the wicked judge said, though I fear not the Most High nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her least by her continuing, continue coming she weary me. Okay, so... The moral of the story is, as long as we continue to keep worrying the Lord, man, the scriptures say, give the Lord no rest until he establish the kingdom. So your prayers count. Your prayers are, are piercing the clouds and reaching Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. There's no prayer that, that the Lord is, is uh, let me say, of the Lord's hopeful elect, okay? Because the Lord said his, his, his eyes, he said his ears are open unto the, their prayers, and that's the elect. So whenever the elect is calling, talking to the Lord, crying out, guess what? The Lord hears every prayer, every prayer, every sorrow, every pain, every uh, 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 trouble, you know, that you're going through. Anybody that troubles you, you know, and your heart is troubled, your mind is troubled, you know, and you, you talk to the Lord about it. The Lord hears you. You know, when you put up those curses upon the wicked that trouble you, the most high hears it and he's with you. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us, brothers. And that's why I hope and pray, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, that I'll be part of the elect, man. You know, because the Lord is with the elect and he hears the prayers, man. The Lord hears our troubles. He hears your sorrows, man. He knows, man. So I'm going to finish the scripture, verse 6. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not the most high? You know, yeah, Yahweh Shai is saying, you heard what the unjust judge say? You know, because of the continuing sorrow of this woman, she worried him. He he acted out. He came to her defense so that she can get out his face. All right. Verse six. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge say? And shall not the most high Yahweh avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Because the elect is scarce. All right. The elect is a small remnant. You know, the Israelites don't believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Only the elect of, of the Israelites believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So the Lord says, shall he find faith on the earth? All right. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I'm going to end it with that. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka Kodash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole for elect. Shalom.